folks, this is Darren and Dakota. and Dakota with My RV Works. Today we're in Joyce, Washington, uh, Chamber of Commerce weather. We have a, a truck camper here. Um, the lady who owns it, um, there's an issue with some propane, uh, a propane leak. Now she showed me some receipts that she had taken to other shops, other dealerships, and I've looked at the receipts. They've already replaced the pigtail. They've already replaced the regulator. Um, and um, But there's still a propane leak. So she brought it to us to see if we can't figure out where this leak is. And um, so we've already kind of started, Dakota and I. And um, I was explaining to Dakota some of the, um, the, the principles of propane. Why propane? Why not butylene? Why not um, natural gas? Why not propylene? Any of these other enes. Why propane? And so as I was explaining propane, we thought, hey, hey, this would make a good video to kind of add value to you guys on why are we using propane in RVs? What's up with that? So let's go through just a few minutes of explaining the, 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 the power. Why propane? Let's explain why propane. We've got another video that we did on refrigerators. Why ammonia in a refrigerator? Why hydrogen in a refrigerator? And I think that when, after we covered the whys of, on, a, on an LP refrigerator, um, why ammonia, why hydrogen, why sodium chromate, and why water, and then pressure and steam, I think Dakota can now go do a chemistry set and make a refrigerator. So maybe after this we can kind of, um, well I'm not going to tell them too much, no play with matches. But um, So let's talk a little bit about propane and then we'll jump into the part of the video where we're actually going to try to find the leak. So Dakota, what is measured by the pound, purchased by the gallon, carried as a liquid, but used as a vapor. Propane. Propane. <laughs> so yes, well, we measure propane by the pound because we, uh, like in Texas, when you fill your propane cylinders, they they're measuring the weight of what's going in that cylinder, and then you go and you pay for it by how many gallons it took to get to that weight, and we carry it in our cylinders as a liquid, but then in our RVs we use it as a vapor. So when you're talking about propane and you're doing math on propane and BTUs and a gallon of propane or propane vapor and all this kind of stuff, it's really important to know what scale you're using, okay? Um, on our certified RV test, there, there's, there's tricky questions because they're talking to you about propane as a liquid and propane as a gas. So it turns out that propane is a very environmentally friendly, meaning non-polluting fuel source. Okay, the only byproduct of propane, once it's burned properly in, a, in an environment, is going to be basically carbon dioxide and water vapor. That's it. No heavy pollutants like you might get from like a diesel engine or gasoline, so it's not hurting the environment at all. And the trees do a good job of scrubbing off the carbon dioxide. So if you have a propane flame burning properly, carbon dioxide and water. Propane is a product of methane, and methane is a main component within natural gas. <laughs> Gee. How old are you, 11? This is 11 year old. Okay, so natural gas, um, what is natural gas? Natural gas is one carbon and, or, yeah, one carbon and four hydrogen atoms. Okay, so that would be CH4, okay? So CH4. So we understand that there's one carbon and four hydrogens making methane. Why am I wasting your time on this? Because propane, as it's separated from the methane, um, propane is three carbons and eight hydrogens. I don't have eight fingers. So it's, it's three carbons and eight hydrogens. Propylene, three carbons, six hydrogens. Butane, four carbons, 10 hydrogens. And butylene is four carbons and eight hydrogens. So, so you see with these, all they're doing is they're changing how many carbons and how many hydrogens to get these different LP gases, okay? And now all these gases are odorless. They add an odorant to it because as you separate it out at the refinery, there's no smell to these LP gases. Um, so they add a product called ethyl mercaptan. That's what you smell. You smell the ethyl mercaptan. You're not smelling the propane. You're smelling the ethyl mercaptan. And the ethyl mercaptan smell, that's that rotten egg skunky smell. What you're smelling is that smell. You'll smell that smell before the concentration of the propane to air ratio where it actually has ignition. We'll talk about those numbers here in just a second. So... Um, so that's a little bit about the, the chemical properties of propane. It's part of the LP gases. It's a derivative of natural gas, which is a component of methane. And so you have several of these enes gases, and it's a relationship between the carbons and the hydrogens. Okay? And that changes its boiling point. It changes its, its BTUs and these types of things. So 
let's focus just on propane. Now that we understand we're following the trail, we're, we're getting our funnel down, now we're going to pull propane out of all this stuff we just talked about, right? You with me? So why propane over all these others? It turns out that the boiling point of propane is minus 44 degrees. So if we had, uh, I like tea, right? And I put my, um, my pot on the stove and I start to boil the water. The water is a liquid and all of a sudden the water becomes a steam. When that liquid water becomes a steam, it's at 212 degrees. That's the boiling point of water. The boiling point of water is 212 degrees. The boiling point of propane is minus 44. So here we have our water, it's vaporing at 212. Here we have our propane, it's vaporing at minus 44. Okay, so that makes it pretty nice to be able to carry our propane as a liquid and know that it's safe unless you're in Wyoming in the wintertime and it's minus 44, which we've done before, and our propane did not vaporize at minus 44. We got very cold there. Uh, that was in 2016 when we were moving up to here, but that's a whole nother story. So it turns out that propane is a very safe, uh, uh, it's, it's a very compact energy source. It's safe to carry as a liquid in its proper container. So what they're going to do is they're going to put some liquid in the container and have a vapor space on top. When they fill your cylinders at the propane filling station, they're really only filling them 80% full, not 100% full. That 20% is that vapor space so that liquid can expand and contract within that cylinder. Okay. Now if I were to have a cylinder with water and I were to have a cylinder with propane, okay, in the exact same conditions, then that propane would expand 17 times more volume than the water would. So as the, the cylinders are warming up, we're still talking propane as a liquid right now, that propane will expand 17 times more volume than the water would expand. So as a compact energy source, it's actually pretty amazing in that property that it can expand more as a liquid. Now remember, we carry it as a liquid, we use it as a vapor. We talked about the boiling point of propane. Okay, so the boiling point of propane was minus 44. So that's where that liquid becomes a vapor. And we also just mentioned the, the principle of as a water compared to propane, propane as a liquid under the same conditions will expand 17 times. So you're getting more liquid maybe to create more vapor. And so as that vapor expands, as the liquid boils at minus 44 and expands, the the liquid to propane ratio is 270 times. So let me put this in an analogy. Let's say it's minus 44 out here when our short sleeves and I'm walking around with a cup of propane, liquid propane, it's minus 44 degrees and I'm walking around and it's, and it's a liquid propane right now. I go into the next room and it's warmer than minus 44, it's minus 43 or minus 42. That one cup of liquid propane will vaporize to 270 cups of vapor. Okay, so as a compact energy source, you begin to see how it is so tremendously compact. It's kind of like a battery, but look at how much energy you get out of this thing. Water compared to li liquid water compared to liquid propane, liquid's gonna expand 17 times li liquid propane. As a vapor, it's gonna go from a liquid to a vapor 270 times, okay? So how, many, how much heat is in that cup of, or it's called a cubic cup of, of vapor? It turns out that if we were to look at propane versus uh, natural gas, okay, there is a, uh, it's two and a half times more BTUs in propane than it is in natural gas. So propane's got a lot of punch in that little vapor pocket, okay? So if we were to carry around natural gas in, in our RVs um, compared to propane, propane has a two and a half times more heat BTUs than natural gas, okay? Um, the other the other thing is that, that that's a safety feature of propane is it's heavier than air. So if there was a leak, it's gonna it's not gonna mix with the air like the carbon dioxide would. It's gonna actually sink down to the lowest spot it could possibly get to, and that's why we keep our propane sensors down low on the floor, about four inches from the deck, so that if that vapor if there is a leak, it's gonna settle down. So that's actually a safety feature. Um, or it's not a feature; it's a property. It's a safety property of propane is it's heavier than air, uh, so it's gonna sink down. Ergo, another benefit of putting propane in our deals. Now let's talk the final thing before we get into the leak. I, I hope I'm adding value to you guys and Dakota, am I making sense? It's hilarious, isn't it? It's so fun. Um, I love you, buddy. So if we are going to light propane on fire, 
let me make a note here. If you have a propane fire, the only way to extinguish that fire is to turn off the propane. It's not like you can hit it with a, um, a fire extinguisher. There's nothing, foam, nothing. The only way to extinguish a propane fire is to turn off the source of propane, period. That's a statement. So if your stove is burning or something, you need to go turn off your service valve on your propane. Okay, and maybe I'll do a video on the uh, the technology that's inside of those little um, uh, um, service valves. There's a lot going on in those service valves, which is why we, we need your propane cylinders and everything inspected uh, every 12 years for a new cylinder and five years thereafter, because there's a lot going on and all that. We need to make sure that it's safe. Um, so if I had propane Dakota and I wanted to ignite that propane, there's a certain temperature that I need to reach in order for that propane to ignite. So here I have my perfect ratio of, of propane and air mix, but I need it to be at a very specific temperature for there to be ignition. And that temperature is 920 to 1120 degrees. So let's just say 920 to 1120. So that's 9, 10, 11. That's, that's a 200 degree difference between 920 and 1120. So I need to have a heat source that is, let's just say 900 to 1100 degrees. If I'm 800 degrees, it will not ignite. If I'm 1200 degrees, it will not ignite. So I need to have that perfect temperature. And, and that is why when you have your refrigerator, your furnace, and all these types of things, we're looking for six ounces of LP pressure in your line. We translate that as 11 inches of water column. And so that's what we're going to get into as we detect our leaks. We're looking for that right amount of pressure because that corresponds to the right amount of BTUs. Okay. Uh, so the other thing we need is this perfect air gas ratio. So not only do we need 920 to 1120 on temperature, we need there to be like a two 0.15% to a 9.6% air gas ratio. So let's just say 3 to 9% of gas to air, that's the ratio we need for there to be com for it to become combustible. If it's lower than that, if it's 1% LP or or maybe even 1.5% LP, or if it's greater than 10% LP, you've got not enough LP or too much LP, you're not in that sweet spot, you will not have combustion, you will not have ignition. Um, and so we talked a minute ago about that ethyl mercaptan they add. The ethyl mercaptan that you might smell is below the point of combustion. Okay, it's down in the ones. So they'll put ethyl mercaptan in. So if you smell the ethyl mercaptan, that's below the 2.15% uh, combustion threshold. Make sense? Okay. So I'm all over. I've got so much information in my head on propane and a lot of math and all this kind of stuff. But the takeaway here is propane is a phenomenal, phenomenal battery of heat. Okay. It's very compact. You carry it as a liquid. It's safe. There's a lot of safety features built into your AMSE tanks or your propane cylinders. They need to be in the, the cylinders need to be inspected. Um, you consume it as a liquid. You carry it as a liquid. If you're getting cold, now there's the gas law. <clears throat> The gas law is an evil law. I don't like this gas law. But as that, as it's colder outside, <clears throat> and I'll finish with this thought, then we'll jump into the repair. But as it gets colder outside, the, the liquid inside the tank gets colder. And as it gets colder, it does not vaporize as much, right? So it's not vaporizing as much. Therefore, you don't have as much vapor pressure. Therefore, you're not going to have a, you're not going to get that, that right ratio, gas, gas vapor, air vapor mixture. I'm burping. Sorry. Um, so as it gets colder, that's when you need the heat for your furnace. But as it gets colder, the tanks are getting colder. They're not vaporizing as much and it's this vicious tail. So if your tanks are less than half full and it's cold outside, uh, you might have an issue getting your furnace to start. And so we recommend to people get some heated blankets or just put a big thick blanket over your propane cylinder. If, if you're in the cold climate, um, they do have heater blankets that you put on your propane, but you need a power source to run those. And so sometimes all you have is propane and you don't have the electricity to keep the heated blanket warm. So just wrap these things up, insulate your tanks to keep your tanks warm so that you have some, some vapor pressure and the tanks don't get as cold as it is outside. Uh, because as the tanks get colder, uh, we talked about that 17% evaporation of the water to the propane. It's not doing that cause it's cold. Um, and, um, so we have a, we get into problems there. So keep your tanks warm, keep your tanks full, a tank that is less than, uh, there's even, um, uh, what I might do is I might make a link or put a link down below in the description. There's a chart, it's complicated to look at, but just go with it, where you, they talk about how full a tank is and how much vapor pressure is in that tank. I love this kind of stuff, but 
but I'll show it to you. You might like it too. Um, but as a tank, it's, as you consume more propane out of your tank, um, the vapor pressure gets low. So if your tanks are getting low, you're not going to have as much va vapor pressure. So end of class. I hope that helped you. But what we're going to do now is there's a leak on this RV. And um, uh, we've started repairing the leak. Or not, we started to detect. I needed to see what was going on. And so at that, let me kind of walk you through how Darren goes about trying to find a leak. Okay, and if that makes sense, and I um, hope I didn't waste your time just now, but I, I kind of wanted to get into why propane. Why not butane? Why not natural gas? Why propane? And um, it's just got the best properties to carry with us as we're traveling around the road. And it is very, very safe. Um, it's a very safe people. Uh, let me throw this last thing out here. Ah, people are like, oh, I'm so afraid of propane. 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 Good. You should be. Um, and what I hear people say all the time is they're afraid of propane because it's going to blow up on them. I don't know the specs. I don't, I don't, maybe if you're a fireman out there, you are a, a DOT type of person, you can kind of give me some feedback. This is just my own hunch, my own heart telling me this. I would bet that there's more RVs burning down because of electrical problems and propane problems. And the simple reason why is because so many people are afraid of propane because it's going to blow up, but for some reason they're not afraid of electricity. And so they're going to just put a bigger fuse in, they're going to rewire it, and they're not going to do glands. And so there's a lot more people that'll do electrical repairs on their RV than propane repairs. And I think that one of the reasons that uh, propane's not blowing up RVs like everybody's afraid of is because the people that are supposed to be working on the propane on your RV, they've had some training, kind of like the stuff I've been rambling on about. Um, and uh, we understand it. And I would like to see that same type of, of care and attention taken to electrical on RVs as well. As an RV tech in the field, Dakota, you can vouch for me on this. I'd say that probably 80% of the jobs we come across have an electrical root in nature. Uh, well, my, my hydraulics aren't raising and lowering my thing. Well, it's because a solenoid burned up. Um, so we deal with a lot of electrical stuff, and that's why I think you're going to be dealing with that too. I didn't realize I was going to talk about propane that, that much, but I get so excited about it. So we're going to end this video here. It's going to be its own little standalone all about propane video. And then the link above will link you over to the repair of the leak on the propane. I think that'd be better than just having one long, hour-long video on the propane. Do you agree with that? Okay. And um, so um, we'll finish this one saying, hey, if this was helpful, if it had value to you, give us a thumb up. And subscribe to our channel because we're always doing these tips and tricks. Dakota's asking some phenomenal questions, and it's an opportunity for me to kind of be a dad and homeschool him on the ways of propane and chemistry and science and uh, fun things like that because I'm passionate about it as well. Um, so, yeah, subscribe to our channel. And then um, if you're interested in how to find a leak, that's what we're going to be working on next. And um, so without any further ado, getting started to get the work done, uh, this is Darren and Dakota signing off from um, Joyce, Washington. And you want to say happy campers? Yeah. <laughs> um, we're happy campers say my RV works. So until the next video, we'll see you.